Thank you. And to document the occasion, I'd like to take a selfie. We all do it, right? But have you truly looked at yourself? Have you connected with your own person, your own self, your own soul? Tonight, I'd like to talk with you about connecting with yourself and finding your purpose through love. So these two concepts of self and love, and I'll be using them interchangeably this evening, there's the self, which is obviously you, and then there's love. And after tonight, you'll know love to be an inspirational acronym used to guiding you toward achieving your life's purpose. If I had to explain myself in two words, it's that I'm a passionate educator. I love my students. Over the years, they've taught me so much. And despite all the schooling I've gone through, I have to say they are my greatest teachers. They have really inspired me, actually, to give this talk. So before I begin, I'd like to ask you to point to yourselves. If you could do that right now. And if you look around, the majority of you point to your heart center. Your body doesn't lie. There's a reason for that. Your heart is an amazing, amazing organ. Other than do the obvious, which is to keep you alive, your heart has an electrical charge that's 60% greater than that of your mind. It also develops before the brain and fetal development, amongst other things. It's an amazing, amazing organ, quite powerful, as you can see. The heart is also the symbol for love. So let me expand upon this acronym, LOVE, and keep in mind how you can connect with yourself to achieve your purpose in life. So let's begin with the letter L. Learn to love yourself. How do you do this? Is it about taking those selfies, looking at them and saying, I look pretty good, posting them on Facebook, Instagram, Snapchat? and the rest of it? Or is it about really looking at your soul and your being? This year, I've had the opportunity to teach an amazing course. I'm a career academy specialist. And I teach my freshmen about careers, how to get there, what to study. And before that, we do a lot of self-discovery, personality tests, identity. And I've been doing a lot of research, obviously, it's a new course, and I have um, run into a woman, Louise Hay, some of you may know her, she's the starter of the self-help movement in the 70s. And she does a lot of mirror work, self-affirmations. So I created this exercise for my students. It's September, keep in mind, they're freshmen. And I asked them to go home look at themselves in the mirror, say I love you to the reflection staring back, or that you're awesome, or that you're perfect with all your imperfections, and then write about it in their journals. As you can imagine, it did not go over well. They were protesting, I'm not doing it, you can't make me, this is personal. It was awful. And as a teacher, sometimes you, sometimes, do things that you're like, oh, should I have incorporated that in my lesson? Um, so I was a little reluctant to follow through. And as irony would have it, one of my former students came by that day to have tea during my lunch. And he was really distraught and just wanted someone to talk to. And I was listening and advising him. And I suggested that he could journal, get it out and write it, what he was having an issue with. And uh, he was passively listening to me. And he asked me, he's like, well, how's your day going? I said, you really want to know? <laughs> Bad teacher day today. And uh, he interrupted me and said, well, have you, you, done the exercise? I love when they call me out on things. And uh, he knew by my body language instantly that I hadn't. And he said, I'll tell you what, if you look in that mirror, I will write in my journal. 
And I'm so glad I did, took the opportunity to do that. And I'm not going to discuss my, my reflection, because I want you to go home tonight and do it. It's really powerful. But I will tell you what it was like to read some of my students' reactions, reflections. It taught me a lot, along with my own, that we do need to do this. We have 86,400 seconds every single day. If you take just a little time to look into that mirror and look at yourself and say, you're awesome, you have a great personality, whatever it is, it's just a really nice way to connect with self. I wish somebody told me that when I was in high school. Next, oh, optimize your time for opportunities. How do you do that? Well, in a high school like this, there are 80 faculty members. Collectively, they share 500 years of college education beyond high school. It's a lot. Not to mention their personal experiences. Students need to take the time to network and speak with their teachers. When I was a freshman in college, I was barely 18 years old, and I had the opportunity to me and get to know a professor of mine really well. I'll introduce you to him, Dr. Abedimi Olu Oyunlade. And over, well over 20 years ago, he was an amazing sociology pr uh, professor, but also passionate about his subject matter, clearly, and passionate about education. He was a new PhD, he was 30 years old, he was really young, and he wanted everyone to get their PhD. And I remember asking him the question, do you think I can get my PhD, Doc? I love that we could call him that. And he knew that I was a first-generation American. He knew that I didn't speak English going into kindergarten. He knew that I had difficulty throughout school just because we didn't have the resources that we do now. But he responded, and I can still hear him say this with my name. And I don't know if you know, but Dale Carnegie always says, in any language, the sweetest sound to anyone's ear is their own name. And he said, you too can get your PhD, Rosa, if you want it. I hung on to that idea for over 20 years. And about four years ago, when I finally did defend my dissertation, I hunted him down thanks to Google, <laughs> and he's in South Dakota, and he returned my call. He didn't really recognize me, and, but then when we dialogued and he heard my laugh, he said, why did you call me? Why did you go through such trouble? I said, you know, as a teacher, I just thought it was so valuable that I needed to let you know the opportunity that you offered me that you didn't even know that you offered me. And whenever he said to me, congratulations, and he accentuated the word doctor, Carlos, I can't express to you what that meant. So take advantage of those opportunities. Network, volunteer. I've been so lucky to take advantage of many opportunities in my life. I traveled to over 30, now 34 countries in December. I went to China, 34 countries. I run several marathons, I worked at the Walt Disney World Company. I traveled um, through Thailand. I lived there for about three months. I um, hiked in and out of the Grand Canyon, and I did a cross-country recently as well. And I don't say this to brag at all. I just couldn't want it enough for you young people, truly. Next, V, vitalize your vision. Everyone should have a vision. Put it on a vision board. I actually had this assignment for my students as well. The importance of vision boards, to paste your vision where you envision yourself to be in the future. I asked them to put their picture in the middle of their best self, an image where they're exuding confidence, uh, bliss, euphoria, and then around it where they envision themselves to be, to live, what job they would like to have hobbies, sports cars. 
my student actually wants to be an orthopedic surgeon, and there's an image on the left quadrant, on the left vision board, of a surgeon. And she actually put her face over the face of the image. So why do you have them? I tell them to put them in a place where they're often at, to look at. It goes into your subconscious. So she'll see or envision herself as a physician, as a surgeon. So when she needs to take that chemistry test, she will make an extra effort to do well because that chemistry test will get her an excellent grade that will go on her transcript, which will then get her into an excellent college and med school, etc. If you see it and believe it, you will achieve it. That's what vision's about. And finally, embrace your emotions. So often these days we hear about yoga, meditation, going in a quiet space. I think we hear about it so much because we live, we live in such a technologically advanced society where we still don't know what the psychological implications are for those of us that cannot disconnect. We have 1,440 minutes every single day. Just take two or three minutes. Take the time to embrace your emotions, to be still. Every Monday in my classroom, we have Meditation Monday, and my students, uh, most of them really like it and remind me when I forget, it's Meditation Monday. Let's do a meditation. So we start, it's a great way to start the week, but we take two minutes to do that. And I'd like to invite you to do a meditation with me this evening. So you're comfortable. Close your eyes and rest into your seat. Bring awareness into the weight of your body, sitting in your space. Take a deep inhale and exhale to relax. Become aware of your breath, a sign of life. And this evening, think of one thing that you're grateful for. It could be a simple cup of iced coffee on the way here. Or leaving your last high school class as a senior. Or a smile from a random stranger. Hang on to that feeling of gratitude of warmth and joy. And if you're comfortable, place your right hand on your heart and your left hand on your belly and become aware of your heartbeat. Feel it and hear it. Notice your breath. despite whatever hardships or struggles that you may be going through, you have your beat and your breath. Together, these two essentials are with you throughout your life, no matter what. Notice how it feels to breathe deeply. Inhale, bringing vitality and energy to your body. Exhale, releasing toxins and tensions. And when you're ready, bring your awareness back to the present moment. Let your next inhale be one of awareness of your life, a gift. And let your exhale complete this meditation. When you're ready, open your eyes. How do you feel? In closing, remember to take time. 86,400 seconds you have each day 
to connect with yourself. Aren't you worth it? May you all learn to love yourself. May you all optimize time for optimistic opportunities. May you all vitalize your vision for victory. And may you all embrace your emotions. Thank you so much and God bless.